Welcome back engineers. In the previous video, we saw how transactions work and how databases ensure asset compliance. In this video, let's see about distributed transactions and see what are the new challenges that come with it. I hope you're ready. Let's get started. So let's first try to understand what is a distributed transaction. So any transaction that is spanning across multiple databases, services or nodes, we can call it as a distributed transaction, right? So instead of a single node or a single database, the transaction itself spans across multiple services. Let's take an example. So let's say we have a user called Alex and Alex wants to travel from New York City to Rome. Okay. And for this, Alex is trying to make uh, use of any internet service provider like Make My Trip or Skyscanner or something like that, where he can book a flight, a hotel and a car, right? So he's selected a flight, he's selected his favorite hotel, and he's also chosen his appropriate car rental option. And then he's clicking on book now. So from Alex's point of view, this whole thing is one operation. It's going to some server, server is making sure that the flight is booked, hotel is booked, and the car rental is booked, right? But from the system point of view, let's see what's happening. So the flight service is in a PostgreSQL database somewhere in Singapore. A hotel service is in MongoDB somewhere in Germany and the car rental service is in DynamoDB in California. So there are different types of databases located in different locations across the globe. And from Alex's point of view, all of them together should work as one transaction. And the whole point is that all of them should commit or fail together. So this is what we mean by distributed transaction, right? So the nodes could be anywhere and uh, the whole operation should be coordinated in such a way that if one of them fails, everybody should fail. If all of them are successful, then we pass all of them, right? So that is what a distributed transaction means. Let's see some of the core challenges of distributed transactions. First, of course, is network latency. Because they are geographically distributed, the distance between them and the number of network hops will come into play when we are talking about distributed transactions. And of course, there can be network failures as well. So in between, there could be network interruptions or network delays. All of them are part of the core challenges of a distributed transaction system. And the second challenge is clock synchronization because they are geographically distributed and they are running their own clocks and based on that, they are running their own timestamps. So there could be some difference in synchronization between timestamps. This is especially a challenge during causal relationships and where linear execution is supposed to happen where there is logical order is involved, right? And the next one is partial failures because these are nodes separated from each other. One node could be failing. There could be a backup server coming up and uh, there can be all types of scenarios that can open up during partial failures. And uh, if this happens in the middle of a transaction, so that is something the database systems should take care of, right? And the fourth one is maintaining asset compliance is one of the big challenges because of the distributed nature of the system. So most databases generally tend to uh, provide eventual consistency guarantee and not a strong consistency because of the distributed nature of this. So maintaining asset compliance is also a big challenge. Let's see how these transactions are actually executed. So the first approach is a two-phase commit. In the two-phase commit system, there is a coordinator who is asking the nodes if they're ready to commit. And the second phase is, if they're ready to commit, the coordinator asks nodes to commit or roll back, right? So these are the two phases. So this is how it looks like. So let's say there are three services and there is one coordinator in between. So coordinator is asking the services, are you ready, are you ready, are you ready? The services confirm that they are ready. Then the coordinator issues a commit command to all of them, right? So this is how the two-phase system works. But the problem is after they have confirmed they are ready and before they are committing, if the coordinator goes down, then all of these services are left hanging. They don't know if they should be committing themselves or should be rolling back themselves, right? So that is the challenge. So this is where the three-phase commit comes in. So in the three phase commit, there is an extra pre commit phase that is added. And this is added to reduce the blocking that we discussed just now. So instead of two phases, which are ready and commit, we are going to add a new phase called prepare in between these two. 
So once the services have confirmed that they are ready and before they are committing themselves, the coordinator issues a new command to prepare themselves to commit, right? So this is the pre-commit phase. So the advantage of this is after they have confirmed that they are ready, the coordinator, if it goes down, then the next upcoming coordinator or the backup coordinator who is coming in will check the current status of the services. If any of them is in a prepared state, it means that they have confirmed that, that they are ready to commit, which means the transaction is halfway through and they are ready to commit and they've just not committed themselves. So this new coordinator can issue the commit command on its behalf, right? So that's how the services can go back into consistent state. And if none of the services are in prepared state, but they are in a ready state, then the new coordinator can issue a rollback command. And again, the services can be in a consistent state. So this is how the three phase commit works, right? So this is mainly a synchronous approach. There is another approach called the saga pattern, which is mainly asynchronous. So this involves a sequence of transactions which are asynchronous in nature. So this is how it works. So first we try to book a flight. In our Alex example, we were trying to book three things, flight, hotel and car. So first we try to book a flight. If it is successful, then we go ahead and make the booking of the hotel. If the booking of hotel is successful, then we go ahead and make the booking of the car, right? So if even one of them fails, let's say the car rental is failing, we go back one step and cancel the hotel booking and we go back another step to cancel the flight booking, right? So this is how the asynchronous nature of Saga pattern works. So this is a common pattern used between microservices when there are multiple microservices involved, right? So this is how the transactions are executed in a distributed system, right? So that's all for this video guys. If you have any doubts, definitely put them in the comment below. Do leave a like if you found this helpful. Do subscribe if you haven't done already. So in the next video, we'll talk about consensus algorithms. So stay subscribed for that and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Thank you.